Hi, I'm the Stark Retro Gamer, and welcome to my video on wrestling game first. Since we've had video games, we've pretty much had wrestling games. Be it the WWE, WCW, or just some made up brand to avoid licensing. As you can imagine, as wrestling games evolved, they've gotten bigger and better with more choice than ever. In this video, we'll be covering the very first wrestling games that pioneered certain features and made wrestling games so fun today. So join me, the Stock Retro Gamer, in another list of gaming firsts. Released in 1983 and developed by Technos Japan, Tag Team Wrestling is an arcade game which centers on tag team matches where you play as Sonny and Terry. A very similar looking tag team taking on the heel team known as the Mad Maulers. As you can imagine, the combat was primitive, relying on grappling with your opponent, then being given the choice of which move to pull off. You slide too late and your opponent got the advantage. This game can boast a lot for the first wrestling game, including an in-ring referee, a cameraman, and a fairly reactive crowd. One thing that surprised me about this game is you can knock your opponent outside the ring and then fight with them while being counted out, which was awesome for the first game. Now, you can't have a good all-round wrestling game without a good selection of weapons to choose from. In the late 90s, when the WWF Attitude Era was booming and hardcore matches were a big deal, all wrestling games caught on and including weapons in your game became a must. From the humble mic, to the vicious chair. Released in 1986 and developed by Sega, Pro Wrestling is a master system game focused on tag team wrestling, where you can play as one of four tag teams. Being an 80s wrestling game, your moveset was basic as you can see. But one thing you could do is go outside the ring and sometimes there would be a chair you could use as a weapon. Being able to fight outside the ring is one thing, but the idea of a usable weapon would have blown my mind. The fact that the weapon didn't always appear gave the element of surprise too. Weapons still didn't become a focus in wrestling games until the mid to late 90s, making pro wrestling groundbreaking with this inclusion. Cage matches can be terrifying. The thought of being trapped in a ring with a deadly opponent with nowhere to run could strike fear into the bravest of fighters. Released in 1991 and developed by Technos Japan, WWF WrestleFest is an arcade wrestling game that centers on tag team and Royal Rumble match wrestling. You have a choice of 10 wrestlers to choose from, each with their own signature moves. The music, the large sprites, and the graphics are fantastic, really getting across the vibrancy of the WWF at the time. In the tag team match mode, if you get to the third round, you get to fight Demolition in a cage match, as you can see here. This was the first instance of a cage match, although you can't actually climb out or use the cage, it still looked great. These options wouldn't be seen in a wrestling game until WWF Steel Cage Challenge of 1992. Wrestling games benefited massively when they switched to 3D. The complexity of the moves and the need to never get the ring more freely really lent themselves to a third dimension. Released in 1995 and developed by Ukes, Power Move Pro Wrestling is a wrestling game released on PlayStation where you can play up to 12 wrestlers in four different arenas. Power Move Pro Wrestling originally had Japanese wrestlers, but when released in America they replaced them with original creations, but kept the same movesets. The moves looked fantastic with smooth animations that were very close to the real thing. Moves like Irish whipping your opponent, applying submission moves and performing high risk manoeuvres really had come a long way. Now that wrestling games had gone 3D, there was no going back for them, and Power Move Pro Wrestling had laid the foundations for this. Blood, or Get In Colour, has been a staple of wrestling matches for the last 25 years, and naturally that is reflected in wrestling games. 
This became more prevalent during the late 90s Attitude Era, when hardcore matches were common. Released in 1987 and developed by Nintendo, Pro Wrestling is a wrestling game released on the NES where you can choose between six different wrestlers and take on the other five to win the VWA Championship. The game features several wrestling moves including Power Driver, Body Slams and Off the Turnbuckle High Fly Maneuvers. If you played as the character at the Amazon, you could perform some fairly dubious moves such as the Head Bite and the Fork to the Skull, which would show some crude pixelated blood splatter. Very tame by today's standards, but for the time, this was edgy. Pro Wrestling also featured an in-ring referee, outside the ring fighting, and the cameraman. Going up to the top rope to perform a high-risk aerial maneuver is always exciting in a wrestling match. The showboating, the acrobatics, the risk of missing. These will be found in most wrestling games now, and really look amazing. Released in 1985 and developed by Technos Japan, Matt Mayner is an arcade wrestling game that has you playing as Dynamite Tommy, possibly based on the Dynamite Kid to fight five matches to win the TWA belt and then defend it. The moveset was fairly generous for the time with pile drivers, clotheslines and running cross bodies. But amazingly, you could climb to the top rope of the top turnbuckles and perform a high-risk maneuver. Okay, they weren't that good, but still, Having these moves in your arsenal was huge, and as simple as they looked were a big deal at the time. The crowd features some celebrities such as Stevie Wonder, John Travolta, and longtime wrestling fan Darth Vader? Why not? <laughs> not happy with the roster of wrestlers you're given in a wrestling game? Couldn't see a wrestler that represented you in the ring. There wasn't much you could do in the older titles but deal with it and just be the Hulkster. The create a wrestler mode has been commonplace in wrestling games for the last 20 years, letting you create and perfect your superstar exactly how you want them. Every body shape, attire and accessory are catered for, meaning you can finally control a wrestler who represents you. Released in 1998 and developed by Iguana Entertainment, WWF Warzone is a wrestling game released on PlayStation and N64 where you could play up to 18 wrestlers. Warzone had a lot of things going for it, such as ring entrances complete with theme music. Look at that ice cold stare and off the Realistic looking sprites, and fun commentary from Vince and good old JR. I'm Jim Ross! It also had the first creator wrestler option with ample customization. You could choose your wrestler's face, body shape, attire, moveset, and even whether they're a baby face or a heel. Now, a very crew creator wrestler option had existed in games prior to Warzone, such as Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3, which came out for the Super Famicom. But these didn't really give you much choice except changing the colour of your guys' trunks. This level of choice was mind-blowing at the time, and really gave the wrestling brawler a new dimension it sorely needed. When it comes to wrestling game graphics, you really had to use your imagination with the older games. As graphics have improved, the wrestlers started to look more and more like they do on the TV screen, to the point where it's hard to distinguish between the real thing. Released in 1995 and developed by Midway, WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game, is a wrestling game where you can choose up to eight wrestlers, fighting for the Intercontinental or World Heavyweight title. The game used digitized images for the wrestlers and moves, making it look far more realistic than any previous wrestling game. 
In contrast to this, the game combat was cartoonish and all out bonkers, with wrestlers producing actual weapons from nowhere in line with their persona. Like Dunk the Clown pulling out a large inflatable hand, and Razor Ramon pulling out large razors. These attacks were very similar to another game series Midway developed. WrestleMania the arcade game was frantic and fast paced, and played more like an action beat em up than a wrestling game, as you can see here. The sprites they used look fantastic and still hold up today. I, can't believe you pulled it off. I hope you enjoyed my video on wrestling game firsts. Did I miss any out? Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.